of that firearm and you let it get in the hands of a suspect and you don't interdict that suspect. In this case, um, we had cooperators at the gun stores, so they are acting as agents of the government. So it doesn't matter if those guns came out of an ATF uh, uh, prop fault or okay. Thank you. Agent Newell, is that what you meant when you said that if ATF puts evidence into the hand of the gun or into the hands of a suspect, there is a distinction somehow between a straw purchaser getting it or ATF putting it? Please explain to me what you talk, what you meant by the distinction of ATF putting it in the hands of a suspect. The distinction for me, Congressman, is that is ATF actually putting evidence or some sort of prop firearm in the hands of a suspect. So that is a distinction from a straw purchaser who goes and under your observation? In, in that aspect, yes, sir, it is. So, so, so you are suggesting here that the distinction is because you did not put the hand the gun in the hands of the purchaser here, that somehow there is a distinction from allowing a gun to walk? Well, Congressman, I, I disagree with something Mr. Canino just said regarding the, the fact that the FFLs were acting as agents of the government. Um, as in my recollection in this case, the uh, two FFLs in particular were clearly uh, instructed as to the follow the letter of the law. Um, to abide by the rules and regulations. Let's, 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 let's move on, because that is the distinction. The, the strategy, you were asked a specific question, who defined the strategy for Fast and Furious? Well, a, a case like Fast and Furious goes through several levels of approval. Sir. Who originated the strategy for Fast and Furious? I, I believe it was at the, at the street level. Tell me who the person is who created the strategy for Fast and Furious. You are the special agent in charge of your area. It emanated from your district. Right. Who originated the concept for Fast and Furious? It, it, sir, it is not one person who did that. It was a group of individuals who looked at the set of facts in this case and determined that this was the best strategy to follow to take off the what, what, what do you mean? Where did it start? Where does the stream start? It tell, starts t tell me who participated in that conclusion? Well, it was it's several individuals. It was the group supervisor, the assistant special agent in charge, myself, and individuals in, in headquarters. Okay. So there was a number of people who were very learned in this process. Now, you testified here today earlier, no part in the strategy to allow guns to be taken to Mexico. It was no part in the strategy to allow guns to be taken to Mexico. Is that right? To knowingly allow guns to to go to Mexico? To yes. knowingly allow guns well, to sir, go to Mexico? Sir, in this case, we did everything. We had seizures in this case when we had evidence. I, I asked you a specific question. I said that there was no part in the strategy to allow guns to go to Mexico. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Would Mr. McMahon have participated in any way in the development of this policy or, or, or this the, the Fast and Furious um, uh, strategy? I know he was aware of it, yes. He was aware of it. Mr. McMahon, you testified, a plaza boss. He has $70,000. He wants $70,000 worth of guns. What is a plaza boss? It is uh, someone in a hand uh, uh, controls an area for a, a cartel. And, and where is that plaza boss? In, in Mexico. So, so you testified that part of the theory here, your words, is the plaza boss expects $70,000 worth of weapons. Correct. Mr. Newell, the strategy Mr. McMahon identifies that you expect, you understand that he expects $70,000 worth of weapons. Where does that get in that there was no part in the strategy to allow guns to be taken to Mexico? Yes, sir. We, had, we still, during the beginning parts of this case, we did not know who the plaza boss was. We didn't know That is not my question about who the plaza boss was. The question is, is there a plaza boss? Mr. Agent McMahon just said he is in Mexico. Right. And, and, and the plaza boss expects $70,000 worth of guns. Now, you are saying no part of the strategy was allowed to guns going to Mexico. Who is right here? S sir, the, the strategy wasn't to allow guns to go to Mexico. But, but, but what did Agent McMahon just say? Who, this was a NOSA death case. Yes. Who else participated in this in the form of this going up? I'd ask unanimous consent the gentleman be allowed to have another 30 seconds. 
Thank you. Sir. Was this an OSADEF case? Yes, sir, it was. Okay. That implies that at a certain point in time it moves beyond your agency, does it not? Yes, sir. What does that mean with regard to OSADEF? What kind of other participants were there as part of OSADEF? Well, there's other agencies that were involved in this. Other agencies. Yes. What other agencies were involved in this? In, in this investigation, uh, they were full partners in this case, was uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, now known as Homeland Security Investigations. We had uh, Internal Revenue Service. And we had assistance uh, to some level from DEA. So are you saying DEA, IRS, and ICE all knew about this, this program to participate all, in the OSADEF? They participated in the investigation, yes. Sir. In the investigation. Were they aware that guns were being walked to Mexico? Sir, again, I'm assuming that they were, I mean, I know they were aware of the strategy, but it's, it's They were aware of the strategy? Yes, sir which included what Special Agent McMahon talked about allowing $70,000 worth of guns to go to the Plaza Boss. Uh, sir, I have never said that we are allowing $70,000 worth of guns to go in. I you was said it was a, the expectation. I was giving a scenario of how it, it works. There is a Plaza Boss in Mexico that is requiring $70,000 worth of guns. So if he is not getting it from the network we are investigating, he is getting it from somewhere else. It wasn't the $70,000 example I gave you wasn't specific to this investigation. It was an overreal generalization of how trafficking to Mexico works. But we are talking about plaza bosses. We are talking about plaza bosses in Mexico. The gentleman's time has expired. We were going to have a, a second round in just a moment. The gentlelady from New York, Ms. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am uncertain as to where to start here because of what I have heard. Uh, I think that I will start with Mr. Canino. Mr. Canino, your comments were that it is inconceivable to let guns go. It is not the way the ATF does things. So in your experience, is what happened in, op in Operation Fast and Furious an aberration from the usual way that ATF does business? This is the first time I have ever heard of anything like this. In 20, I'll be, I start my 22nd year on Friday. This is the first time I have heard anything like this. And during the course of this operation, were you advised that there was going to be, at what point did you become aware that there was going to be a different method of operation? Ma'am, I need to put this in context. I didn't, the first time I ever heard of someone accusing ATF agents of actually watching suspected gun traffickers just drive away was when Special Agent Dotson was on CBS. I had, and I didn't believe him. And I was very vocal about that. I didn't become aware until it started coming out little by little, talking to fellow agents. Uh, and then mid-April, I saw some uh, documents, and that convinced me that what Special Agent Dotson was alleging was, in fact, correct. Thank you. And the other special agents that are here, Mr. Gill, Mr. Wall, Mr. Ledman, in your experience, is this the first time you have ever seen ATF operate this way? Again, I recently retired, and after uh, going on 23-plus years, uh, it is inconceivable. And again, uh, I didn't believe it even after seeing Mr. Dodson as well, and I still didn't believe it until after I uh, talked with Mr. Dodson and others that then I became convinced that perhaps ATF did walk these weapons. Okay. And Mr. Wall? As I stated in my opening uh, remarks, uh, yes, it is the first time I have ever seen it. And I was very skeptical. I didn't believe Mr. Dobson at all. And Mr. Ledman? Ma'am, uh, part of my duties and functions is to look at the uh, southwest border cases, all of them. And this is the first one I have seen. But I would like to add something that the panel was asking earlier. Uh, you asked when we first became aware that Mr. Acosta, right? was involved as the leader of the straw purchasing ring and uh, some of the other issues as to Mr. Patino. That was in 2009, and it was early on. I briefed it to uh, uh, my senior directors January of 2010. And we know this, and one of the driving forces behind how we know that these were going to Mexico and there were Mexico people involved is because our other law enforcement partners provided us with information, specific information, that allowed us to know exactly what was going on and to what cartel it was going to. This was not a mystery. We knew this in December of 2009. I briefed it in 2010, January. Thank you, sir. So Special Agent Newell and uh, Special Agent McMahon will we'll get to you because you are his supervisor. So at some point, 
based on the IG's report and DOJ, they said, we are going to try something different here. I am assuming, because that is the way things work in government, and maybe I am wrong, that someone said, we need to have this operation and we are going to make a determination that for the first time ATF is going to conduct business this way. We are going to let these guns walk. Now, they maybe didn't say it, but in essence, that is really what happened. This is a different way of conducting business for the ATF. Where would that plan have come from? Somebody, I know you said you sat down with this group, Mr. Newell, but somebody higher up than you made a determination that for the first time ATF was going to run this. We have heard from this panel, we have heard from the panel prior to today, that this is a complete aberration from the way the ATF has done business. Where would that have come from? Well, ma'am, in, in, in putting the strategy together for this case, we, the, the strategy came from several places. The Department of Justice issued in, uh, in originally a draft in 2009, October 2009 and January 2010, about how to combat southwest border uh, drug trafficking by Mexican drug cartels, and one of them dealt with firearms trafficking, which said, uh, by, through use of the OSADEF co-located strike forces, a mere interdiction is not the answer. You have to go after the structure, the organization of the, of the uh, uh, whatever it be, firearms, human, drug trafficking organizations to make the biggest impact. Okay. And, and who would that memo have come from? I, I do believe that memo came uh, down from uh, the Deputy Attorney General's office. Okay. And then, so this is now we are going to tra change strategy. This is going to be a different way to uh, conduct an operation. So you get your directive from them, and then these groups that you talked about, you, you sat down and you came up with a plan, or did that plan come from up on high? The plan figured into, into uh, or the memo figured into how we were going to address this, what, when we first looked at it in November 2009, was already a very active, prolific firearms trafficking organization. As Mr. McMahon testified, in my 23 years, we have never seen an organization that was this uh, prolific in buying firearms in such a short period of time. So we felt that at that time, in conjunction with the OSADEF Strike Force, where this group, Group 7, was located, that the best way to attack this organization was through the use of you know, a multi-agency, uh, conspiratorial type investigation which would dismantle the whole organization. The gentlelady's time has expired. We now go to the gentleman from Mich Michigan, Mr. Amash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am going to yield my time to Mr. Gowdy. I thank the gentleman from, uh, from Michigan. Mr. Lebman, for those who are uh, perhaps watching and not familiar with the full panoply of investigative techniques, surveillance uh, is a tried and true investigative technique, correct? Yes, sir. What about consensual encounters where you just do a knock and talk, where you walk up to someone and ask them. I mean, there is a reason Dostoevsky wrote Crime and Punishment. There is a reason Edgar Allan Poe wrote The Telltale Heart. Sometimes people confess, don't they? Yes, sir. There are several tools in the toolbox, especially when you are faced with uh, the fact that we know that these weapons were going to be used in such carnage down in Mexico and the United States. We should have pulled every tool out of that toolbox, not just to make our case. Our case should not have been the priority here. The stopping, the, the flow of those firearms should have been the number one priority, and we should have reached into that toolbox. We should have conducted interviews, or we should have done interviews uh, to uh, or surrounding people. We should have uh, tracked these weapons better. We should have followed everything by the letter to stop them. I mean, just what do we stop with the number of guns? One, have five, ever, ten? Have you ever heard tell of a law enforcement officer stopping someone for speeding when really they may have had another purpose in mind? I have